Every car has a story, and every once in a while, we get lucky here at Muscle Car of the Week and are contacted by somebody who claims to have been a previous owner of one of the cars that we featured that now lives in the Brothers Collection. Well, this week, we've actually spoken with two previous owners of a couple of very special cars that we've previously featured, one being a 1968 Shelby GT500 KR, and the other one being the very controversial uh, 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback that has three and a half miles on it. And we spent some time chatting with those two previous owners. So today, we're going to share some of their stories about those two very cool cars. First, we're gonna talk about that 68 GT500 KR. And if you recall, this car is showing just over 6,800 miles on it. It's never been restored. It's on its original tires. And it's a beautiful example of a, a very correct uh, 68 GT500 KR. There are a few things that have changed on it, and we did get some feedback from viewers pointing out some details. But luckily, we were contacted by a gentleman named Casey Anderson. Mr. Anderson was the second owner of this car, and he had it in his collection for 18 years and he told us all about the original owner and some of those items that we found on the car. The car was originally purchased by a gentleman named Lewis Carlisle, and Lewis was a pilot, but not just your everyday pilot. He was the team pilot for the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball team and eventually the LA Dodgers baseball team. So the car was purchased at Galpin Ford, new in Los Angeles, uh, but it was stored at one of Mr. Carlisle's many homes um, in Chalice, Idaho. He had some horses up there and he also had a bunch of different cars. And this was his play toy that he used to go visit and drive around. And being a pilot, um, he maintained this thing like an aircraft. And Mr. Anderson had told us that uh, the oil was changed very, very frequently. And the only oil product that Mr. Carlisle would ever use was Chevron brand oil. And he did uh, tell a story about how one time somebody put a different brand of oil in the car and Carlisle requested that it all get drained and refilled with the uh, Chevron brand oil. So he was very particular about the way the car was maintained. Now sharp eyes notice a few details on this car, like there's a black sticker on the driver's side outside passenger mirror. We have learned now that that sticker was actually put on by Gallup and Ford as a dealer inventory control number and Mr. Carlisle never took it off. He just left it there, and, and whenever the car went in for service, it was referred to as that particular number. So that was just a dealer stock number. When Mr. Anderson bought the car in 1987, it was showing just 6,237 miles on the odometer, and he sold it with 6,520 miles. So the mileage definitely lines up with where the car is today. And uh, Mr. Anderson noticed that he had some challenges when he took the car to shows because many people thought it was a restored car. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, it looks brand new and everything on it still appears new all the way down to those original tires. But some things have been changed. Uh, we were told that there are two different types of tires on the car. In our Muscle Car of the Week episode, we reported that they were Goodyear Blue Streak tires. Well, they're not. They're actually Goodyear Speedway 350 tires. And the difference between the two is that the four tires on the car on the ground are known as a large letter tire, but the spare is known as a small letter tire. And we think that Mr. Carlisle liked the look of the big letter tires, so he had those put on probably at the dealership on day one. Uh, another thing that's interesting, underneath the car, the rear suspension, it is wearing a set of pro-spec uh, traction bars and Coney shock absorbers, which were also added at the dealership, and there are invoices with the car to document that. But one thing that a lot of people pointed out is the car has a 1967 Shelby steering wheel, which is different from the one that would come on the car in 68. And there is also a receipt for purchasing that 67 steering wheel back in the day and installing that because Mr. Carlisle really liked that rich wood 67 style steering wheel. So it's not correct for the car, but it's been there basically since day one. But one of the things that we were more interested in is the South African reference stickers on the back of the car and some of the Safari Park stickers on the dashboard. 
And what we learned from Mr. Anderson is that Mr. Carlisle was a world traveler, being a pilot, and he would go on safari in Africa. And uh, we don't think the car actually ever went there, but he did. So he did his thing on safari, came back, put stickers from his trip on the car. So they're technically not really much more than bumper stickers, but uh, they've been there for many, many, many years. The overall condition of the car still is as original. Um, the paint is thin a little bit on one of the fenders and there's a little run on the sail panel. That's just the way Ford painted this car. Uh, but as many people know, Shelby cars were often signed by Carroll Shelby. It's very popular to take a Shelby Cobra or a, a Shelby GT Mustang, take it to a show when Mr. Shelby was still alive and, and have him sign the car. Well, in this case, this car has two signatures on it and they're kind of hidden they're under the rear deck lid, right where the light would shine on them. And the two signatures are Carol Shelby and Peter Brock. And Peter Brock was Shelby's very first employee, uh, race car engineer and designer, very famous guy, still around today and uh, still active in motorsports. Very valuable prize signatures on that car with Shelby and Peter Brock. They're just kind of hidden in the trunk, so you have to know where they are to go see them. This car has been featured at many, many shows. It's been featured at the Shelby Museum, and we were told it was also included in an anniversary Mustang Ford commercial while Mr. Anderson owned it. So that would have been in the 80s or early 90s. I'm guessing maybe the 35th anniversary of the Mustang. The car was driven on the highway with a bunch of other Mustangs and helicopters flying over getting footage, and it's all pretty neat. So it's a very well-known, highly documented car. I do think it's interesting that Mr. Anderson would take it to shows and they would tell him, you're not the winner because it isn't real. I guess that's part of the challenge when you have something that is as nice as this particular GT500 KR. The other car we're revisiting is the 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback 289 car, painted in that unusual color of uh, what we're now calling lilac, and uh, only showing three and a half miles on the odometer. And, we had told the story about how this car came to be, where a Ford dealer in Hickman, Nebraska, a guy named Mercer, had purchased this car along with a handful of other Fords, brand new from Ford, and stored them in a building, uh, non-climate controlled, at his dealership as investments. He thought he would retire one day by selling these cars off, hopefully for a obviously higher value than he paid. So the car only has three miles and a couple of tenths on it today, and it's an unusual color of lilac, and there's some questions about how all this you know, came to be. So we ended up talking to a guy named Rich Locker, who was technically the third owner of the car. Uh, he reported that uh, the car was for sale in the, the Lincoln Star newspaper, and uh, a couple of brothers out of Illinois or Indiana bought it for a while, and, and then they sold it to uh, uh, Mr. Locker and a partner of his. And he spoke with Mercer's wife, and the story was that of those cars that he was buying for investments, she wanted a Mustang and she wanted it in this special color. So there was a Marty report done on this car that documents everything about it. And in the Marty report, um, it says the car left the Ford Mustang assembly line for 59 days and went to a Lincoln Continental plant where it was painted this special order color of lilac. And if you look at the trim tag on the car, it just has an X, meaning special order paint color. So the color is not described on the car. And back in those days, if you had some pull, uh, you could order a special color, and especially with Mercer being a Ford dealer, maybe he got them to brew up this lilac color, which was not really available in anything else, and paint the Mustang that color. So the story is that uh, Mrs. Mercer called this car her baby, and they backed it off the trailer when they delivered it. She drove it around the block once, and then boom, it went into storage. And many people said, well, if this thing was stored all these years, how come the engine is kind of messy when you open the hood? And uh, Mr. Locker pointed out that Mercer used to start this car and let it run every once in a while. I don't know how frequently, but every once in a while, he would run it up to operating temperature and then just shut it off. He never drove it. So if you look closely at the tires, even today, they still have the little nubs on them because there's you know, three miles on them. But that action of starting the car up and bringing it up to temperature meant that the engine had condensation on it from being in a non-climate controlled storage facility. And eventually it started to rust 
and oil would begin to seep out of the valve cover, gaskets, uh, because even though it doesn't have a lot of runtime and mileage on it, there's still, you know, five decades of time on this thing. So when Locker bought the car, it had not even been cleaned since it was pulled out of the uh, original storage facility. So it took him a solid five, six days to go over the car and clean the outside. And he said there was layer upon layer of fly droppings and dust and dirt and cobwebs and, and insect stuff. And he said it was a real mess. So he took a bunch of time to clean it and, and polish it with some compound. He said the interior though remained uh, pristine because the doors were closed and the windows were rolled up. And interestingly, we had some people comment about the shift knob on the manual transmission. And we reported it as having a 289 with a four speed because there's a four speed knob on the shifter. And we showed a picture of the original window sticker and it just says 289. It does not say anything about the transmission. Well, it turns out we were wrong. Um, Mr. Locker pointed out that the car is actually a three speed manual. And he said if you ordered the four speed, it would show up as an option on the window sticker. So there is no four speed option. But why does it have a four speed ball? And the only thing they can think of is that while this car was being assembled uh, by Ford, because it was a 289 fastback manual shift car, maybe an assembly line worker thought it was a four speed and grabbed one of those balls and stuck it on there. To this day, there's no evidence that a wrench was ever put on that ball on the bottom. You know, there's no marks like somebody changed it. Uh, so we're assuming that it's been there the whole time, but it is a three speed, so we have to be corrected that we said it was a four speed. And yeah, some people pointed out there was a little bit of wear on that ball. I just think that that's the way it was. It's just kind of a soft piece of plastic and, and it shows some wear on it, but it's not from being shifted and driven. It's just the way it is. Now, Mr. Locker did drive the car just a little bit. Um, when he took possession, he changed the fluids out of it. Um, he found that the uh, original battery had leaked acid and actually ate through the battery tray. So Locker found an NOS Ford brand new battery tray and replaced it. So that's about the only part that's ever been changed on the car as far as hard parts. Uh, but he put the battery in, changed fluids, and went to start it up. You know, he put fresh gasoline in it, and it wouldn't run. When he took the distributor cap off, he found the uh, ignition points were corroded. He filed those clean again and started up, and then it ran. And those points were probably corroded because the car wasn't driven enough. It, you know, they were used every once in a while just to idle it uh, and warm it up a little bit, and then got shut off, so they corroded over time. And Locker said that he did take it for a couple of laps around his shop uh, inside. And that's when he discovered himself that it was a three speed and not a four, because when he went to go shift into fourth, it wasn't there. So we were very fortunate that these two gentlemen watched our show and reached out to us to uh, share some additional details on the car. It happens every once in a while, and we're always happy to share that information. Uh, if you owned a car or know somebody who owned something that we featured, uh, please get in touch with us. You can reach us through our Muscle Car of the Week website. We're happy to learn more about the cars and all those notes will be put with the car and saved in their file. So it's always cool to know more of the history. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Muscle Car of the Week. We will see you next time with another very cool car from the Brothers Collection.